What's going on guys? It's Tom New York and today I'm bringing you a brand new video where I'm going to be giving you my thoughts and opinions on the latest leaks that have come from the Rise of Kingdoms community. Now the first thing I want to talk about, right, is this image that came out this morning. This was posted on the official Rise of Kingdoms Facebook and Instagram accounts. It may have been on Twitter and some other places as well. This is essentially just announcing the new Osiris League season four, which is fine, but that's not really the interesting part of this image. The interesting part of this image is actually in the bottom right corner. Who the hell is that guy? I have no idea. I have no idea. There is literally no commander in the entire game that uses this helmet, right? There's not a single one. There's no epic. There's no advanced. There's no elite. There's no legendary. This helmet doesn't exist in the game as far as on a commander's head, right? Um, now, upon further inspection, you can take a closer look and you will see that if we come into the commander's uh, screen here, where is he? There is my boy by bars. Now this shield right here appears to be, this appears to be the same shield, right? It looks like the exact same shield. If we take a look here, it's got the little, you know, these little half moons and it's, it's, it's a circular, small circular shield. This is the same shield just in blue. We also see the kind of like the same cape as well. Um, and it looks like the green on, on, on the sleeve on the undershirt. Uh, this to me, when I was looking at my phone screen, it's hard to see now, but this looks a, like a dark green. So this could just be by bars with his battle helmet on instead of his typical head wrap. But, uh, I don't know. It's worth, it's worth at least mentioning, right? Because ever since Mulan came out and we noticed that Mulan was in official promotional images before she was even in the game. Now I look at every single promotional image with, you know, a fine tooth comb to find some leaks. And uh, yeah, I saw this and I was like, who the heck is that? So this could be a leaked commander, an upcoming commander with a similar shield to by bars, or it could just be by bars with a different helmet on. I, I don't know, but usually they're pretty consistent, right? I mean, you look at the other commanders here, they all look pretty much exactly how they do in the game. This, it would be weird for them to just change by bars. I don't know, but it's worth pointing out, worth noting. Now let's talk about the actual leaks, right? Let's talk about the actual leaks. And uh, you've seen other content creators, I'm sure by now, talk about these leaks for the upcoming cavalry commanders coming to Rise of Kingdoms. Now these leaks come at a, at a at an expected time because if you look at Moctezuma, we first I made a video on uh, I uploaded it on um, January 20th and then Moctezuma first came into the game um, on Jan I'm sorry February 20th. That was when his he first like came to Mightiest Governor. So usually about a month before is when we start to see the leaks happening. And if my math is correctly, April 17th should be the first mightiest governor for whatever the next commander is. Now they just changed mightiest governor in the wheel of fortune. I'll make a, probably a separate video talking about that. And they could actually use this opportunity um, to change their release schedule, right? Because they just shook up how mightiest governor works completely. They could use this as an opportunity to slow the release of commanders, in which case we won't see one on April 17th. Um, and so that maybe these dates aren't exactly set in stone, but if they follow the same pattern, then we should see a cavalry commander come into the game on April, on April 17th. So the, the timing of this leak makes sense, but everything else about this leak makes absolutely no sense. Right. Um, and so we're going to be talking about that. Now, of course I did see Gecko's video where he also expressed some skepticism for these leaks. And I want to give you guys some theories as to what I think is going on here, right? There's a couple of things that could be happening. Typically with leaks, uh, we see the images first, right? Because you know, a new update comes into the game and then there are a small group of people or maybe one person, two people, whoever it is, um, does the illegal activity of, you know, scraping those files, uh, for the copyrighted uh, images that are owned by Lilith. Right. And then they release these to the public and then eventually it gets in the hands of content creators and people make videos like myself. Right. Um, and so usually the first thing that comes out is images, right? Because they're the easiest. Once you find that image, you upload it, boom, it's leaked. It's done. When you find the text for the image, usually it's in uh, Chinese, right? Because this is, this game is made, it's, it's a Chinese game. Um, and so you, there, it takes some time for, you know, people to translate that text uh, into something that makes sort of sense. Right. Um, and so it's weird that we would see the text first and not an image. 
right and this is also partially why i didn't make a video immediately because i was kind of waiting to see like okay are the images coming out because if the images don't come out i don't really care right i don't really care because i mean literally any person with some sort of reputation in the community this, this is just a text document right like anyone could write this up i could literally write up two commanders post it in a video and people would believe it right at least the first time after they realized it was fake, I would lose all credit credibility. But as a content creator, I could do that. Right. And so, you know, and I know that this comes from a reliable source somebody who's been right before, uh, and which is why this even got out there. Right. And people started talking about it because of the credibility of the source. But the fact that there's no images is, um, interesting. Now, the other thing is that these commanders, the translation is poor, but it's terrible. Right. And the skills don't, some of the skills just make absolutely no sense. There's a lot of like, you know, what, this is um this basically there'd be a lot of new mechanics introduced into the game if they release these two new commanders uh and it just it doesn't make sense to me right and so what i think happened and we're going to cover the leaks just you know if you haven't heard about it we'll talk about that in a minute but what i think actually is happening here um is and this is my speculation right just so we're clear this i have not been told this i this is my speculation this is one possible theory as to why these leaks are so Odd. these leaks could have been intentionally controlled leaks from Lilith to see who in the company is is leaking this to the public right that is you know what I'm assuming now this is a practice that is very common in tech companies right in companies that have very valuable intellectual property uh, you know if they do have a leaker problem they will at some point eventually uh, control a leak and you know send it to just a handful of people that they kind of suspect are leaking and if it eventually does get to the public then they know okay this group of people someone at least one person in this group of people that we told is the leaker right and eventually what happens is the, they identify the person they get fired they get sent to jail or they get charged with a, a huge fine right because i mean intellectual property like this is game a game a global game played by millions of players like you're screwed if you're a leaker and you get caught for a game like this you are screwed so this is it could be um Lilith's attempt at trying to figure out who's leaking this information right now i know that when they release the update and people search through the files that's kind of inevitable right um but i do think that there is a some degree of leaking that's happening before it ends up in the game files that's my assumption i, I think that's probably happening it's possible that lilith lilith controlled this leak and they came up with two believable commanders with skills that are sort of believable right and they kind of leaked it to a couple of people and said hey like this is what's coming next and you know and then they wait to see like does that land in the public's in the public's hands and it did um and so i think it could be a controlled leak um the other thing that could be happening right and i know that that sounds like some you know tinfoil hat fbi cia type shit, right i know that that sounds like kind of ridiculous um but you know it is it's a very reliable and uh well-known tactic that is used by big businesses um but you know let's assume that that's not the case right let's assume that's not the case what we could be seeing here is the people that do leak this information could actually be facing some sort of pressure from Lilith, whether it's legal pressure or threats or whatever the case might be, um, because they keep leaking the intellectual property, right? And so what they could have done here is actually just leak poorly translated text on a white document. So that way they can say, Hey, you know, we've been right in the past, which means we're probably right this time. Wink, wink. Um, but you know, we're not going to release the images because Lilith is banging on our door saying, Hey, like we are bringing you to prison. So, um, it could be the case that, uh, to kind of save themselves, right. And, and kind of, you know, say, Hey, like we didn't leak anything official, right. We didn't leak anything that ends up in the game. We just leaked some poor, you know, we just m speculated on poorly translated text. Right. Um, and so that's the other reason why per perhaps, um, just the text came out in terribly translated form. And, and, and again, it's, it's in a way for the leakers to kind of, um, hide behind a, a technicality like hey this time we didn't release the pictures we didn't even release the the real text we just you know translated it sort of poorly and you know maybe it's real maybe it's not who knows so those are my theories as to why this leak is so odd right because again i just we're gonna go over this but i don't see these being real commanders like if they are this is game changing right it's game changing let's jump into it now i know the top is cut off a little bit here but this is ashoka the great a legendary commander from india talents he 
he is a cavalry conquering and attack commander first skill the beloved of the gods it's an active skill that says when in battle ashoka has a percent chance to nullify all the damage done by the target for four seconds and heals and partially wounded troops now this would be crazy this would be crazy because what this says and nullification is not something that we see in the game at the moment but what this is saying is that it's something that's applied to the target not something that's applied to you right you're nullifying the damage done by the target not done to you and so what this means is that if if this is an accurate translation which i doubt but if it is what this means is if you apply this skill to somebody like Yi song ye suddenly his aoe deals no damage to anybody around him does that make sense right that's that is what nullify means and it says all damage done by the target so it is a 50 percent chance so when you actually when this skill pops it might actually not nullify any damage right uh, if you're super unlucky it might not nullify any damage at all um, or it could nullify damage every second for four seconds which would be crazy so really powerful potentially powerful skill here especially if it applies to the target and not you right because the other way that this could work is you just don't take damage from that target uh, with a 50% chance for four seconds, but that's not how it's worded here, right? It's damage done by the target, not damage received by your army. Interesting wording. You also have a 1500 healing factor, which is powerful. There is lots of counters to healing at this point in the game. So interesting active skill, something we've never seen before. Is it going to be game breaking? I don't know because it is again, only a 50% chance every turn, which, you know, on average would be a 25%, uh, no damage taken, right? There's a 25% or 25% of the time no one will take damage from that target. So still powerful, right? Um, passive skill increases cavalry health attack and march speed by 25% attack, 10% health, 10% march speed. This reminds me of um, Saladin, right? Saladin obviously doesn't have uh, the health there, but you know, Saladin has the 20%, uh, I'm sorry, 40% battle stats, 5% march speed. Whereas here we see 35% battle spat stats and 10% march speed. So it's kind of in that same ballpark, right? Attack obviously is not the stat that I would really care too much about, but of course, if you know, if you're rallying with this, I guess maybe. Um, so that's interesting. Third skill, Lion Capital of Ashoka. Uh, it says, while attacking a governor's city, troops led by this commander have a 10% a chance to deal a 1000 damage factor to the garrison. So this kind of is just a worse version of El Cid's, I think, second skill, where he just has a 10% chance of doing a thousand damage factor. Um, this only applies when attacking a city. So this doesn't even apply to attacking uh, a flag, right? Um, and this doesn't apply in the open field. So this skill actually is not that exciting to me. I mean, yes, extra damage when hitting a city, great. Uh, but I just don't, you know, this just doesn't seem like anything too crazy to me. Fourth skill, the chakra, it says when Ashoka's army has been reduced to 50%, um, he produces an effect um, by which the army doubles for 15 seconds. You can only have this occur once uh, in a single battle. So this is powerful, right? You do get a little nice spike in damage when you hit that 50% mark, uh, which gives you, you know, a little bit of maybe time to run away during that time period and still deal powerful damage as you do so. Um, but you know, I, I don't know, like this would really, this would actually be broken if it applied to rallies, right? And now this does say it only is when his army, um, when his, his army doubles for 10, for 15 seconds. So, you know, if you have a rally that goes from 2 million to 1 million, does it double to 2 million based on this? I don't know. Um, if he's the rally lead, then maybe, which would be insane. That would be totally insane. Uh, but keep in mind, this is another, um, uh, this is another thing we've never seen this before this is a mechanic we've never seen before in rise of kingdoms right and also a once per battle thing is not really something that we see either right because what if you <clears throat> drop below 50 percent uh and then during that 15 percent or during that 15 seconds your healing factor goes off which brings you above uh 50 when it's over and then you run away from battle and then you'd fight another player and now you're in a new battle and you're slightly above 50% because of that healing factor. Like, I know that would take like crazy coordination and timing and it probably won't work out that way. Um, but could you keep just like farming this skill over and over with new play? I don't know. I don't know. Really interesting. Does it apply to rallies? That's the big question. If it does, this is insane. Um, then we have the expertise, which also makes absolutely no sense, right? The expertise says that there's a direct damage factor to the target. Um, and for the next five seconds, increase troop attack and defense by 20% and increase healing by 25%. This is saying that it's an improved version of a skill that this commander does not have. 
there is no this commander does not have a skill that says for the next five seconds increase attack and defense and healing by 15 percent that's not a that's not a skill that we saw here right it's not so my assumption is like what where did this come from what is this what is that right i, I don't i don't i don't get it um it's it's weird to me uh does he have two active skills like we see on Tariq here which we'll get into in a second i don't know what I, I don't i don't get it i don't get it um so yeah interesting stuff here the next commander is Tariq bin ziyad a legendary from north africa he is a cavalry i guess versatility attack commander i know again this is uh cut off on the top here um but we do see some skills here now this is interesting we see again two active skills what that see that just doesn't make sense i don't understand how that could eat like how does that even work do they pop at the same time like I, I don't know that's what that's what i mean i don't think that this is either this is translated like garbage or it's just completely fake but anyway um his active skill says for the next five seconds increase all damage by 50 percent i mean hey that's powerful right that's a powerful especially in a rally scenario like that's if you do him primary and then somebody secondary who's dealing a ton of damage factor like that could be absolutely devastating um his next skill also active it says reduces rage of enemy by 20 whenever this commander is attacking the target does that mean every normal attack like that doesn't you you generate rage slower than that right so i don't understand that and it says uh troops normal attacks have a 10 percent chance to reduce enemy defense by 20 percent for three seconds which goes up to 50. my assumption is that this will be a 10 percent chance to reduce damn defense by 50 percent and rage by 20. That's my assumption. But again, two active skills doesn't make sense. I don't even know how that would work. So is this even real? I don't, I don't know. Um, the next skill, it says increases attack and health of cavalry units by 15%. That's very standard, very basic, very boring, but it's a decent amount of cav stats. That's cool. Um, and the health there looks it's nice. I like to see some health on the calves. Um, and then we have persistent. It says when the number of troops remaining is 75%, all damage is increased by upwards of 10%. When you're at 50%, you get a 20% damage buff. And when you're at a quarter, you get a 30% damage buff. So this is actually, um, really powerful, really powerful stuff that we see here, especially for a rally scenario, because the, it's just as your as the garrison is chipping away at that rally it's actually replenishing some of the damage that those troops would have been doing. So it just makes the rally take longer. It makes the rally deal more damage over time. Um, so powerful stuff here. Now keep in mind, losing 75% of your troops and only getting a 30% damage buff, it's not going to, you know, it's not going to, um, you know, uh, you know, compensate for those troop losses, but it will do something, which is nice. Now, what's interesting is apparently the expertise here that says increases troops attack by 150 percent troop health by 150 percent and all damage by 15 percent but decrease troops capacity by 50 percent so what this means is that your army can only bring half the amount of troops that anybody else can and again this is a new mechanic we've never seen this before so i i just don't see how they're going to increase all these or they're going to implement all these new mechanics i i don't know to me again this screams fake but anyway um what this means is he's not good in the open field but he's insane for rallies because you know you can still bring if you're the rally lead with this skill as it's worded it means that you're contributing 105,000 troops right assuming no expansion 105,000 troops to the rally, but the rally size is still the same. It's not a 50% rally capacity. That's not what this says. It says troop capacity, right? And that's for your army. So this is insane for rallies. Actually, this can't be real. Like this is too game breaking um, to be real. It just can't be, right? Now, this does tie in interestingly with that last skill there because, you know, if you have, if let's say you're fighting in the open field, not a rally in instance, if you're fighting in the open field, you're gonna be losing troops a lot faster. So you're gonna be getting this extra bonus here while also having insane health and attack. So I just don't know. This is like, this commander just doesn't make any sense to me at all this seems in this seems like it would break rallies forever like they would they would have to nerf this to infinity to make it realistic 
um and then you know the, the two active skills i just don't see i don't see how these leaks could be real right and so my assumption is that these were either controlled leaks by lilith to identify who the leakers are so they can throw them in jail or these are you know um these are just really terribly translated in in, in an effort for the leakers to kind of save face and protect themselves and say hey we didn't actually really release any real information uh because it's so poorly translated so that's kind of my two cents on these leaks is this guy one of those two commanders i don't know it's probably just a reskinned by bars but you know it's interesting to speculate i love richard's face over here by the way guys if you enjoyed this video make sure you drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton and a majority of you guys are not subscribed to the channel so if you want to know the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video make sure you subscribe to the channel click that bell all that good stuff and again it does help out the channel a ton comment down below your thoughts on these leaks and what do you think about this guy over here what do you think about him who is this and do you think these leaks are real or not again i know they're from a reputable source but i think there's something else going on in the background because as it stands at the time of recording we don't even have images for this so comment down below do you think these are real or do you think they're fake or do you think they're just terribly translated i would love to hear from you as always all my social media links are in the description below so make you follow me over there on instagram twitter discord facebook all that stuff it's always down below and of course there is a link in the description below to download rise of kingdoms absolutely for free for your pc or your mac it's a program called blue stacks it's my favorite way to play rise of kingdoms and i think playing on a much larger screen gives you a huge advantage in fights especially open field fighting so make sure you go ahead and download the link uh, download the program it's free like i said give it a try with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace